Hello, yes. We've been north, south, east and west, but now it's time to plunge into the middle of Westeros and pick apart the accents of the Riverlands and the Iron Islands. They're all one kingdom, you see, apparently. Starting with the Riverlands, I guess loosely based on the Midlands of England, we have House Tully. Boiler alert, none of them have Brummy accents. Americans have only just discovered northern people, so let's not rush them. Hoster Tully is ill at the start of the show and later becomes dead. He doesn't get any lines, but he does make a pleasant crackling sound like a bonfire on a late autumn afternoon. Brendan the Blackfish Tully is a gruff, badass old man who could chide his nephew. Oh, shut your mouth about that damn mill. I don't call him nephew. He's your king and walk away after firing an arrow without even waiting to see if it landed. He has a sort of southern accent with a tinge of somewhere else. Possibly Scotland. Maybe Ireland. Edmund Tully. He's my nephew. I love him. And he's a damn fool. Edmund is a sort of wet fish. He doesn't exude much power or intelligence and in the show becomes a walking joke by the end. I like to think my experience has led to some small skill in statecraft and Uncle. an understa- Please sit. He speaks with an RP accent. Catelyn I covered in the first video in the series, but on reflection I probably should have waited for this one. Her sister Lissa, however, speaks with a sort of posh unhinged voice with a touch of Scottish here and there. My sister's guest is weary. Take him down below so he can rest. Introduce him to Maud. The innkeeper woman at the inn at the crossroads sounds a bit too upper class for a random peasant, but it is what it is. If I don't require a large room. Surely, my lord. We have nothing. This farmer who takes in the hound and aria and then gets punched and robbed is also a bit too well spoken. The gods will have their vengeance. Frey will burn in the seventh hell for what he did. Things were different when Hoster Tully ruled the Riverlands. Curliquet, for tis his name, a knight of the house Bracken. Sounds Dutch or something, if you ask me. A lord is honoured by his trust. Jonas Bracken, for some reason, has a roaring Irish accent despite living in the Riverlands. Take fealty to King Renly and move south to join our forces with his. There's this bloke, the Tickler Tickles. Please stop, please. Hey. When he's not screaming, he sounds pretty estuary. This old woman who's just finished listening to her son being tickled to death sounds remarkably well spoken for a peasant. He was my son. My sister was three days ago. My husband the day before that. Clearly a travelling elocution teacher has been touring the Riverlands for some time. And this random Harrenhal knight sounds like everybody else in the inn, aside from one. She is. Since Bronn has no actual backstory on where he's from, we might as well include him here. But don't go looking for me to bend the knee and the lord you every time you take a shit. I'm not your toady, and I'm not your friend. Speaks with a northern accent, so maybe he's from up there. Christ only knows. And who could forget this simpering farmer and his overacting display when he begs Ned Stark to do something about the mountain being naughty in the Riverlands? When they was done, they butchered them as if they was animals. They covered our children in pitch and lit them on fire. Why does he sound so northern? And this other farmer the Hound and Arya chance upon? You shouldn't be sitting out here like this. Where else to sit? Tried to walk back to me hut. Had too much. Then I remember they burnt me hut down. He also sounds like he owns a whippet and holds his pint of bitter like this. Now onto the biggest wankers in Westeros. No, not the Silent Sisters. The Freys. From their stupid hats to being more inbred than the average British town, House Frey have done some despicable things. Walder Frey, the bed-shitting old patriarch, speaks with a croaky RP accent. You see that? Fifteen she is. A little flower. And the honey's all mine. 
Deliciously evil and bitter sounding, you can tell the actor thoroughly enjoyed the role. He should definitely play Prince Philip should the opportunity arise. His heir Stevron Frey gets one line and he sounds simpering and posh. What am I supposed to do with you? Uh, father, you forget yourself. The same could be said of Ryger Rivers who gets short shrift for daring to pipe up during negotiations with Kathleen. Father, please. I need lessons in courtesy from you, bastard. Your mother would still be a milkmaid if I hadn't squirted you into her belly. Lotha Frey and Black Walder might as well be the same character as far as the show is concerned, right down to their matching tea cosy hats and northern accents. The roads are crawling with cutthroats and bandits. When the King of the North summons us, we go. Our fathers instructed us to tell you that his alliance with the North can continue if his terms are met. Taking a look at the map of the twins, they are kind of on the border with the North, so we'll give them a pass, I suppose. Mary Frey here gets an awkward line when she has to correct the old bastard for getting her name wrong three times. I'm Mary. Fine. Rosalind Frey, who seems to have avoided all the ugly branches on the tree that the other Freys hit, has her line spoken over by this damn fool. Father Smith Warrior. Mother Maiden Crone Stranger. But we can get a hint of posh southern. Lord Edmure. I hope I'm not a disappointment to you. Walderfrey slash Bolton meets an unfortunate end. Ramsay, please. I'll leave Winterfell. I'll go back to the Riverlands. <laughs> The Frey Knight, who helps Catelyn capture Tyrion, has the same sort of Irish twang the Tickler had. The Twin Towers of Frey. How fares your lord, sir? Lord Walder as well, my lady. He has asked your father for the honour of his presence on his 90th name day. He plans to take another wife. Ah. Another northern sounding bloke stops the hound and is very rude to him, in my opinion. Are you soft in the head? Turn this car around. There's Mr. Ah, it's over. Peace over, yeah, is it? Aye, it's over. <laughs> Another northerner. The rest of the phrase gurgle in various accents when they get mass murdered by Arya. <laughs> now for the Iron Islands. Based somewhat on the Viking lands of old, most people that live here don't sound like that at all. Starting with head honcho Balon Greyjoy, he's from the same moustache twirling posh villain school that Walder Frey attended. I brought you a proposal from Rob Stark. Who gave you those clothes? Was it Ned Stark's pleasure to make you his daughter? A very strong performance and very, very evil sounding. Theon I covered in the first video, northern accent and all. Yara, or Asher in the book, speaks with a very posh southern accent for some unknown reason. How did you get past the guards? Anything with a cock is easy to fool. My dear. Maybe Balon sent her to a finishing school in the Reach. Euron Greyjoy is a dark mysterious warlock pirate in the books. Here he's a bumbling clown who can build a fleet of ships on a barren island in a matter of days. Go back to your homes. Chop down every tree you can find. He does, however, have the only Scandinavian accent in the entire place. How's that for some Iron Islands irony? Aaron Damphair Greyjoy speaks with a southern accent. Let Euron, your servant, be born again from the sea as you were. Bless him with salt. Bless him with stone. Bless him with steel. He has a great voice, in my opinion, and was wasted on just this one scene. This fake Aaron in season two speaks with a full on Irish accent. What is dead may never die. What rises again? Rather. Dagmar is just Finchy from the office with leather armor on. Dagmar, first my hand. That's not to detract from the performance, however, as he plays the role to a T. Thought he'd never shut up. It was a good speech. Didn't want to interrupt. Black Lauren here, the very insubordinate member of Theon's crew. Your captain. <laughs> I have been reaving and raping 
since before you left Balon's balls, Captain. Speaks with a Scottish accent. At this point, just go with it. Drennan, another Irishman. And where are you going? He doesn't get many lines before he gets killed by horniness. Harag, who tragically attempts to kick Theon in the balls, is a swaggering Australian. Your sister's dead. She's not dead. She's dead. Even if Euron hasn't cut her throat yet, she's dead. She's our queen. She's your sister, and you left her to die. Ralph Kenning is incredibly posh. <laughs> Are you a woman, boy? You don't know. The Ironborn will not surrender. He's cut off mid-bullying of Theon by Adrak Humble. There's a fierce Ironborn name. If we yield, we live. Is that what he says on this paper here? Who sounds like he'd be at home selling you car insurance on a daytime TV ad. For the Riverlands, I'm awarding the show four missed arrows by a damned fool out of seven. For the Iron Islands, two fingers in the bum out of seven. Join us next time when we will be discussing the Vale. And you know what that means. Bye then.